Are you guys all set? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. We're just waiting. Okay, it's 6.03 p.m., so I'm going to call the meeting to order for the Bethel Select Board for Monday, March 14th, 2022. And I would entertain a nomination for a select board chair for the one year term. Nominee Chris Jarvis. Is there a second? Second. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There you go, Chris. You you go. <laughs> yeah, he's okay, like, no. I'm not <laughs> saying nothing. Nay, nay, nay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, so first on is to um, to approve the agenda for this evening, unless there's any amendments that need to be made. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 This is so weird. It is weird to be back in person, <laughs> isn't it? I, Just I wait when that sun comes through those windows like, here. Oh <laughs> Um, and it, Farron, you're, you're here early, so you want to go now, or you want to sure. wait six minutes, or you're good to go? <laughs> Get all your people? I'm going to wait like five and a half. Yes, I'm Farron, and on behalf of the Conservation Commission, um, we are seeking your approval to turn some of the mowed lawn down at the Beavine Park into a pollinator patch. We've been talking with this nonprofit group, Be The Change, B-E-E, -E, The Change, and they're based in Weybridge, Vermont, and they have a goal of, um, they want to get some pollinator patch in all 251 towns of the state. And um, so they had, he had reached out to me earlier this year. He was busy this year, so um, we're trying to get it ready for this coming summer season here. Um, and let's see, they, they install educational signage along the pollinator patch, and they go around town businesses and um, any other groups to seek donations to fund the project, so there's no um, cost for us or for um, the town any like, to put in a budget or anything like that um, and the town or I'm sorry the businesses that would agree to donate any money get a sign for their desk saying you know we helped out with this pollinator patch kind of get a little uh, networking going on as far as that goes um, the lot the that we have kind of eyed to convert is um, that red area is our first choice. And that is, as you can see, adjacent to the driveway for that, that is the pump, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the pump station for the right. water. <laughs> Right, and then there's the boat launch at the river there. Um, so that red spot is our um, like number one choice. The, and then I have a couple optional auxiliary spaces. The one right next to the pump house as well, that one next to that driveway there on the left side of this map is like our number two area. And then there's that third area um, that's optional. It's kind of a raised section there, um, you know, near like the park, more, more where people go and the mm -hmm. gazebo. Um, you know, this, none of these borders or areas are really set right now. Be the change wants us to get at least a preliminary approval here before they even come. So, before, if we did want to do two, option number two, over by the pump house, I would want to talk to Richard just to see, um, just to make, I don't know, I know that's not the pump house we have slated to do a big upgrade to, but I'm just, I just would want to ask him any questions before we did option two, but um, option certainly one and three are good. 
care about that, but two, I just want to run by Richard. Yeah, and, I, but, look at, looking at it, I thought probably the, you know, the option that you had there in red was probably made the most sense. Um, you know, I think you probably don't want it as close to the gazebo as possible because there's a lot of activity there. Um, but the pump house as well as who knows what I future projects you may have yeah. to do there and dig it up or something. And Richard may not um, have no problem and be like, oh, great, less to mow. So I don't know, mm -hmm. I just want to verify. But what do they plant just out of curiosity? Is it like milkweed and clover? Or? There's a whole mix. There's a big variety. And while I didn't see a list on their website, which is be the change dot earth, I believe, um, they had a few pictures and there were all kinds of different wildflowers Sweet. and they mostly concentrate with solar fields because underneath solar oh, sure. is almost, it can be, um, yeah. you know, not as, you know, mm -hmm. used. So they kind of stick to those, but yeah. they'll do any spaces. So yeah, there's a whole variety oh, of good. things. Yeah. Well, keep in mind too, is that the town of Bethel and the town of Royalton co-own a solar field um, it's in Royalton at the transfer station on top of the old landfill. Oh, interesting. So I'll bring if you're, that up to Yeah, them. let the guy, yeah. the gentleman, or people know who would be the change um, if they're looking for a place in Royalton. Um, if they like to do under solar fields, that's yeah. why it's on top of an old landfill. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's but a I'll, you know what? I'll make a note and I'll, I'll talk to Richard tomorrow. I'll send him this and then email you and just let okay, you know. Perfect. So that way you're not um, wondering about option two. I I think, and I apologize. I should have done that. Yeah, they have a bunch of them. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. I think the only concern that I had with it is, and I, and I was, you know, like, I know what a pollinator patch is, so I was pretty. Um, educated in that and I was looking at the bead change and you know the um, educational plaques and things that would be put up <clears throat> but I guess I mean obviously it's in ha this area is a public place so there's people that frequent that area and use the boat ramp so in a normal setting let's say if I'm allergic to bees or something right I mean I always have to know that I'm allergic to bees but in this case we're actually attracting more than maybe average so would there be any type of like, I don't know, like a warning sign, like, you know, this is a pollinator patch or, or, or be careful or something? Because cause the boat launch is right there. Um, and then because we are attracting bees there, like, I don't know, God forbid somebody got stung, got stung or killed or something like, would that be any type of responsibility? Because we actually have a patch there and it's not identified that. I don't know. To well, be it says, I don't know what they put on their educational signage. It says to tell a story of the pollinators and they're important. Obviously, if someone goes in and tramples it, they trample it, but there's nothing we can do about that. Yeah. But I wonder, do you happen to know what's on the educational signage by any chance? What he said about that mm -hmm. is, is that they like to do a path through it. Nice. As a little educational walk and they'll have little tidbits of information on the critters and the plants so that's so there's signage there that then says this right. is a bee pollinator right. they're attracting bees so people would yeah. know oh, that's yeah. interesting and that's, i just because a lot of people right now yeah, i mean obviously if you're allergic to bees you're cautious all the time but yeah. being that we would be attracting more than average i just kind of wondered would there be something that we could put up just to warn somebody so <clears throat> one it covers the town saying right. that we tried to do something and two some kind of you know, maybe somewhere near the boat launch or something like, you know, this is a bee pollinator area, there's bees in the area or something, I don't know. Like, one, one thing about the boat <clears throat> launch is from almost everybody we talk to about the boat launch and even talking with people, people from White River Partnership, Mary and Greg Russ, um, that boat launch is not a great boat launch at all. It's steep. There's no like harbor to, the boat will just get swept away. Um, Lisa Campbell, she's on the CC. She can oversees the Peavine Park. She doesn't like it. Um, a lot of us have the mind to um, upgrade our boat launch, possibly just moving it, period. Um, a lot of us are thinking that down at the ball field, that drive that heads out would be a great spot. Of course, that's on the higher side. Um, but then also down at the bridge where that work was done, 
upgrade the stairs there. I think the stairs there are hard for kids and older people or anybody with any type of um, mobility impairment. So um, that's kind of like a longer term goal for us <clears throat> is to try to just um, make that better. So, but that boat launch is there now at Peavine. Yeah. So that is something we do need to, I guess, address the whole Well, and we should talk projects. about it at the steering committee meeting Wednesday night. I think that's something that, you know, in, in the whole plan to do the downtown right. and look at the parks, I think they'd mentioned that. And then right. maybe, so that might be something for us to bring up at the, right. I think that's, that's Wednesday night. This week. Right, yes. Is, yeah, because I know in that whole Better Connections, that was one of the things yep. they talked about was either trying to make something a handicap accessible or better. But that's a good, that's a good point. I'll, I'm gonna, that's a good, uh, I'd forgotten about that thing. You're right. Were there any other sites that you had thought about be, before this one that for pollinator patch? Yeah. Was there any we, other ones that you guys had thought of and, or was the reason why this one was higher? higher up on the priority we list? Taught, we thought about like Carla's Meadow, but we already, there's trees there to hold the bank that White River Partnership did. And now it's all farm field, the rest. And so we don't want to encroach any more on that. Um, the other parks like Spring Hollow, the one in Gilead, they're just not that big. Be the Change will do up to an acre, which oh, is wow. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, we thought that this was one that would get a pretty good size, make it worth it mm -hmm. because of the trail through it and the educational stuff. We thought it'd be fun, um, cause it's a well visited park. So that was kind of, that was our thinking. I feel like of Keybine, that's a lesser used area because it is, you know, you kind of mm -hmm. have to go up over that knoll from the main area, so people tend to hang down lower, but it's kind of a cool thing to have. Right. To kind of get people attracted up there. Yeah, right, exactly. It's the less used part of Peavine Park, so. Yeah. But it might get people to kind of expand yeah. their use of the right. space. Yeah, so. Oppose it, or? My other question was how, how they would differentiate that border along the roadway that goes to the pump house mm -hmm. because if you have people going to the boat launch and they they'll just naturally travel through that patch possibly uh, right. if there's something along the edge maybe just some big stone big rocks you know along that oh. edge there right to kind of keep people from using that as a shortcut Logs isn't there a gate though i thought there was a <laughs> no. fence around well there's a well, gate there's a, there's a gate at the house. road there's a gate at the entrance to the pump oh, house yeah. That's yeah, right. but I like the yeah. idea of like something natural that something natural creates like maybe that like border. Those big rocks along yeah. along Peavine there, just something to keep. We just have to be cognizant of where right. they plow, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, because I know that you're right, because there's a gate right there. Yeah. Which I think Richard would. But it sounds like maybe if they're going to come and do a a site survey and sort of at that point oh, yeah. in time, yeah. we could have a little more input as to. You know, defined borders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. There are quite a few trees around there. Um, it may be problematic, or uh, it may it would certainly impact the the plants they choose, depending on the shade, shade sun kind of thing. Right, there are a few big the trees there, um, oh, sorry. but there's there's enough open I, where yeah, I just that's that's a it'll flourish. Yep, down there where two rivers meet too yep. is yep. fertile. I would be fine ground. with doing both A and C, if <laughs> but yeah. And as far as that goes, we were going to again. Um, meet with them and kind of see what they recommended, have them take a look, see yeah. what they recommended and take it from there. Well, sounds good. Yeah, I think, I think you have our support. And me again, if it came back to me and you said, we're thinking more of this area. I mean, I'd probably try to stay away from the pump house area, I think, just because you never know what yeah. <coughs> I'll reach what out. project or something we may have to do there to mm -hmm. disturb it. But the other two areas are pretty, I mean, yeah. they're not like, 
Lindley said they're not being used, and right. that, I don't that think there's any. Is, is quite a, yeah. a hill down. And I don't think you'd want to use that section anyways, cause, just because, yeah. I don't know, but uh, may not be able to get as good growth. I don't know if you're already there. planning to be in touch with the school or not on this, but um, the middle school, and it's going to be a, a district-wide position next year, but for right now it's just the middle school has um, a new community schools coordinator who is intentionally like working with sort of wider than just the school, but bringing projects out from the school and also projects that are happening out in the community into the school and really promoting education, like cross, cross ways. So Mary Shell, I don't know. Mary Shell, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but she'd be a great one to connect with, just to give her the heads up like, hey, this is happening. Mm -hmm. So if she wants to be involved or has a group yeah. that's looking for a project like this, she might right. be a great conduit to just help funnel like, hey, there's this group right. doing a section on pollinators and right. you know, they could come help no, put in the garden. That's a great idea. Yeah, just got introduced to her yeah. via email. So, yeah. well, sounds like so you once you do it, you'll just let us just let us know where you pick, just so we can sure. yeah let people know. And if you have anything you want put out on Facebook or front porch form or the website, certainly let okay. Kelly know, and she'll do that for okay, you, Karen, whatever you want. That sounds great. Okay, then I'll send him an email and hopefully get him over here soon. And yeah, I'll give you guys an update then. Sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Nice Enjoy your evening. Have a good evening. Thanks, Baron. Take care. Bethel for all to do a stone wall kind of thing, if that's where it goes. Yeah, maybe. Oh, down there. I don't know. Yeah, it depends. Um, I'll, I'll have to ask Richard too about how far over they mow and this and that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know what she's what their plan is for the money, but they also I know what we'd mentioned during the Bethel Connections is doing the um, them looking at the boat launch. So we'll yeah, see. that would be nice to upgrade I that know. or or like, <clears throat> you know, like you said, maybe potentially move it somewhere. Yeah, suited, and we kind of talked about it a little bit oh, too. Steve, it's narrow. Yeah. yeah. I, can't, well, it's, it's, I can't imagine trying to hold the boat. Yeah, it's quick right like, at that spot if you went right yeah. around the corner. It's yeah. a little shallow, but it's a lot yeah. slower. I mean, it's usually just kayaks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, we'll but. have to. I'll put a note. Just yeah. jump and go. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's not that deep. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> that's true. But it is cold. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Anything further on that? Uh, we'll turn it open to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody wants to bring up, now is the time. So let's see, we have Rita Jen Leonard. So there. Hello. <laughs> so if there's anything um, anybody has for public comment, <clears throat> feel free to unmute yourself and say so. Everybody's good. Okay, hearing none. Wait, le wait, Leonard is moving. <laughs> I will let you know that um, the EIC is working on um, putting together a NV, putting together a Bethel Pride event. For, for June? Um, for June, the weekend of June 25th, 26th, 27th. So we're planning that out. We're getting we're starting to get that in order, so we'll have more information for you probably the next meeting, the next select board meeting. For June 25th, 26th, and 27th. Yep, that weekend. Okay. Yep. All right. Perfect. I just want to make sure I said the right days. Let me look at my calendar. <laughs> yeah. <Hold> no, and... <laughs> <laughs> a pride yeah, sure. yeah, Lenny, uh, just because people couldn't hear Leonard said the EIC is working along with Leonard who is not a member of the EIC as he says but he said um, he, he, they're working on a June 25th 26th and June 27th pride event sorry that's 24th 25th 26th okay all right Perfect. And the June 19th, uh, Juneteenth something. Yep, and the Juneteenth, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, Biotris, I'm assuming it's your computer that's on the projector. Is it possible to do gallery view so we know who's in or not in the meeting? Because I had no idea. We had, we had so much public. 
If it's not possible, that's okay. No, that's really, that's, that's all of them. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She's like, she started reading. Leonard, so we'll put that, I just, we we'll made a note, so we'll, um, any information that you have, just. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Okay, here and none, we'll move on. The, um, so we'll just go through, the after town meeting day, typically for the next meeting or two, there'll be a lot of different annual um, reappointees or um, organization of business of, you know, things that we'll do. Um, so this evening we have a couple of them here to go through. Um, most of the time they're kind of the same as what we did last year unless there's a new source or something like that so um, so the first one is just to designate um, the Herald as the newspaper of record as we have in the past so moved. okay all in favor Aye. and and then the host loc uh, the physical locations to post the meeting notices which um, Currently are the town clerk's office, the town manager's office, and the Bethel Public Library. So we're just. Um, is there an issue that those are essentially the first two are the same place? No, apparently not. Two places, yeah. They've been that way for for years. But also yeah. too, is we post all the same information on front porch, uh, not on our website. That, but this is talking about physical yeah. locations. So it's hard because you don't necessarily have. You know, sometimes not everybody goes to the same bank, and so it does make it a little bit tricky for places. But yeah, it's been that way for for years. So the good thing is we do have the website. The post that the excuse me at the post office too. Yeah, and did they stop you from that? I don't know, but it's a yeah. it's a good place to. Uh, yeah, they have the bulletin board that they yeah. only allow non profits, so the municipal entity would. But what happens sometimes is some places, and I'm not saying this is the case with the post office, we post a lot of stuff. And sometimes yeah, because yeah. it's oh, all the agendas, people get a little like, you're taking up all of our space, you know? <laughs> Which is true, we do. Right. Because by the time we post every agenda. Well, she so. posted the, the ballot sampling and, yeah. and the yeah. warning and all that was posted at the post office. I feel like yeah, it's that's good. underutilized space in general. <clears throat> There's oh. rarely stuff. Because some things require five places, so I'm sure that when we do well, five. It used to be at Central Market. Yep. Two it used to be at the Bulletin Board or Richardson's store. Yep. Mm -hmm. or several so, places. Yeah, so you can, you know, when there's five places, then we have to, like, bond votes have to be in five places. I'm not sure if her elections maybe have to be in more, but, um, but so no, I mean, you could make one of these another spot. I don't have a problem with that, but I will say just because somebody comes into the clerk's office doesn't mean they come to our side, but you can certainly make one another. I have no skin off my teeth. This is just what you normally do. Um, so if we could inquire. I, mean, I guess we could always add a location, right? right? Yeah. So if we, so if we had set ask. these for tonight, we could always look in and add the post office. Yeah. If, so yeah, we'll make a note to, to ask, yeah. allow ask that. the ask post Renee office. Yeah, we'll ask Renee if she says okay. I didn't even look. Do, do they still have the bulletin board out in front of the central market? No, no that's gone. When it got right? hit by the car. Yeah, that's right. Never yeah. came back. Yeah. So we'll ask Renee if. It'd be almost nice if there was a the centralized. centralized, you know, somewhere yeah. on the yeah. block yeah. Yeah. that would have a bulletin board. I mean, the Arnold block's kind of like a really nice. It'd be nice to have one in front of town hall. But it's got the, the nice uh, <laughs> chalkboard out front. But it, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if one of the businesses through there that or 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 even on the opposite side of the road near the, well, um, the laundromat and those areas is, yeah one, which we used for Bethel Strong mm -hmm. yeah be nice to have, have them out there but true so I'll ask I will or I'll have Kelly somebody ask Renee um, to see if we can do an additional spot okay. but for now we would make the town clerks the town managers office and the Bethel Public Library the designated physical locations to post meeting notices just need a motion for that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And then we just need a board member to sign orders of the payroll on behalf of the town. Currently, 
It's Paul, no. do you want to continue with that function, or somebody else want to steal it from Paul at this point? I could do it for one more year. <laughs> He's good. I think that's what he said last year. <laughs> <laughs> I nominate yeah. Paul. <laughs> okay, Paul's nomination's on the table. Mm-hmm. You'd be a write-in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you then you got to get. Then you got to get a minimum of votes. <laughs> that may not work out so well. Five percent of the vote. So I just need a second. Second. No, you no, like motion. Hi. <laughs> she really wants you to be there. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Lindley's got it up for you. <clears throat> Can I interrupt for a second? Yep. I have a bad shoulder and neck, and looking this way is hurting it. Oh. If somebody on that end could come down here yeah, sure. and I could go up there, that would be great. You want me on the end? Would you rather be on the end? I do, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I, it just, I need to be looking this way. Oh, of, you know, okay. Yeah, looks like, <laughs> no, no, that's understandable, though. <laughs> you can still look that way, just have to speak loud, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So going forward, if you're going to do anything, you have to be able to look to your right. If you're going to hurt yourself, you got to hurt yourself so you can't look left. All right, so we left off with the payroll. Um, So Paul has been selected for that. Um, And then we have the the select board's rules and procedures. So you had that standard one that you do every year, and then. I went through and I read the one that you've had and also VLCT had put out an uh, updated one since you guys have take, done yours. So I read the two and <clears throat> added, tried to move your stuff into the one that came from VLCT. It was just a little bit more um, in depth, but of course you can always do what you want. One of the things that came out was... Um, and it's in the rules of procedure. So in your rules of procedure in the past that you'd adopted, it talked about a vice chair, but I have never known you to have a vice chair. So um, I wasn't sure about that. And then it's so in the rules of procedure, in both VLCT and your original one, it talked about a vice chair, but we can obviously edit any of this out. Um, But Chris had called me about it. I said, I don't know what you've done you know i just know what you've done since i've been here and you've never had a vice chair and you don't have to um i just remember what you guys do now which is somebody volunteers if chris isn't here to to be the chair for the day or you appoint somebody you get here early and then as soon as the meeting opens you say i appoint dave to be chair you know so you you suck or somebody i know when i got on it we didn't really have a formal um select board rules of procedure it was kind of the the one that was passed down through the state um, that we did. So that year we had <clears throat> restructured it. Um, so I think my signature was like on the on that at that time. Mm-hmm. And, and I can't. I was trying to think back. I I, I can not remember us talking about the vice chair piece because we've always just you know if someone can't make it, you appoint somebody for the meeting. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess it makes sense if. <clears throat> I don't know, it's kind of an either or I guess it doesn't really matter to me um, if we had someone appointed or or if we just appoint by. It, it didn't matter to me. I just felt like if you weren't going to do it, then you should take it out. And um, so basically, mm-hmm. so we just tried to take what you guys had done in 2016 and kind of move it mm-hmm. to this updated version that, that the VLCT had done, which adds a little more detail, but still covers the same basis. But you can do what you want, you can take the same one and redo it, uh, or you can take the new one up. Well, I think the, one, the newer one's got a little mm-hmm. more detail to it, and, and it you know, relates to a few other examples of things that happen at meetings now that need to be in there that weren't in the original one that we did. I did have a couple of questions um, about, as far as the vice chair goes, I think we, you know, we've been doing all right. Yeah, like I said, I didn't, it was in your old one. It was number one in your old one under procedures. And I was like, yeah. 
Am I missing something? Sorry. I don't remember Sorry. you ever doing that. Yeah, because we've never nominated a vice chair in the past. Yeah, so, so we can yeah. take that out under C1, the body shall annually elect a chair, if that's well, what you want to say. Or we could say. just put something, I don't know if it's in there, but you could just say something to the point that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if the if the chair is absent, then a yeah, we, we, member we, of the selected body would be yeah. So we could just say right here, we'll the act body, as a chair for that meeting or something. The right. body shall annual elect a chair. We'll cross out the and vice chair, and then under, um, and then it says if we'll just say if the chair, instead of if the both, if the chair, um, is absent. A member selected by the body shall act as chair for that meeting. So I'll just yeah, edit fine. this out. That's fine. We'll do that. Perfect. Yeah, I, I agree with Paul. I feel like the language of the newer one is a little more updated with, you know, it's got some language around more of the virtual pieces. And yeah, it just seems a little more accurate to today. We, we have talked about limiting the length of the yeah, 49 right. times as well. The ones that I, mm. that I had uh, on public comment. Right. Um, Which number? Well, it's like under, in there. That's well, in the public participation section. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would go yeah, under public meeting or public mm -hmm. participation. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, but I would suggest that we find that language that we adopted. One, two, three minutes or something like yeah, that. I think that's what we said was what, yeah, yeah you think you, yeah, I had yeah, it on yeah, the back yeah. of an agenda. Yeah, because right now it just says at the beginning of each selected meeting, yeah, should there be should 15. be 15 minutes afforded for public comment at minimum. Right. But, and, but you've already got in there that a person cannot speak twice. Um, number five. So somewhere around there, or it could go up in number two and just say, yeah, limited to three minutes per person. Yeah. To allow enough time for everyone. Okay, so I'll look and see what you did there. So I can add that. Add. Of course, the, yeah, the old one had two to three. limited to two minutes, right? Yeah, um, in the, so. the 2016 said, one. Yeah. Yep, it said um, such comment, if permitted, shall be limited to two minutes unless by majority vote. Um, but I can look and see what you did in the past. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like the inclusion of the language, unless by a majority vote, because then it gives the select board that flexibility that we talked about. Sure. All right. I so mean, I was most say of the time it ends up being right. a quick thing, but sometimes <laughs> it could be, right. you know, something that's not on the agenda that becomes a bigger item. Um, and a couple of things up on the agenda section. Did you want to put in you wanted to have um, items added by Thursday? Yes. I do, thank you. Items. Somewhere in there. Yes, I like that's right, thank you. Item uh, under agenda, item one. Uh, that first paragraph. Uh, and it, what did we say? I thought it was Wednesday at noon. Shall contact the town manager by Wednesday before the meeting. Right, yeah. Right, Wednesday noon, I think. Yeah, Wednesday thank Wednesday noon you. before yeah. the meeting. <laughs> yep, good. Perfect. I'll um, thank you. And then on on your organization, do we want to put something in there to the effect that the chair only votes in cases of a tie? Because it did say that's that's contrary contrary to uh, Robert's rules. Under yeah. number five, yeah. it says um, rules, the, chair the chair of the body, body may make oh, okay. motions. And you guys agreed to that before. It yeah. says yeah, the chair of the body may make motions and may vote on all questions before the body. Mm -hmm. That's Robert's rules. Okay. And I think it used to say that in your prior one. It was number eight. eight. You guys used to say the chair <coughs> of the select board <coughs> may make motions and may vote yeah. on all oh. questions. And I think you still says may. So it really depends who the chair is, right? If they want to. Yeah. I mean, those I. Are, those are good. Thank you. Robert's rules. Thank you, Paul. I mean, I've just, I've always. You know, since I've been on the board, I guess the way I've always thought about the chair position is, is if you go and make motions or vote first, you can persuade the other body, I guess mm -hmm. is the way I've seen it in the past. So I think it's better that, that the body votes and then, then if needed, the chair, which what have we had one time that that's ever happened, you know, to cast a 
<laughs> final vote. Yeah, I've so, only known you to make a motion um, like once. So. Or the same thing with motions, because then it feels like the chair is like taking the meeting over, you know. And I think mm -hmm. the whole point of this is, is the chair to to organize and run the meeting, but not, you know, take the meeting over when it comes to the articles. But so I can put. But everybody these does it differently. Updated. Well, you obviously still have a voice as the chair. It's not sure. Yeah. It's just not being the overarching. Well, I mean, we. I think we've all been a part of a body that has had an identifying figure that may, you know, take over the meeting, you know, and, you know, it's, it's our meeting of, you know, board of five plus Therese, not, not the chair's meeting, you know, but. So I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my bump out, so yeah. <laughs> don't touch my bump out. So Speaking I, of that, are they going in the ground soon? Yes, <laughs> pretty soon, once snow stops. Yeah. So I can um, make these adjustments and then put this <clears throat> motion back yeah. on your agenda for the 28th. Thank you for those, Paul. That's so good. All right, so I can do that. Also notice that a second is not necessary. Right. Yeah, and you guys always second, but yeah. it's funny. All right, then so people are just going to feel left out. Yeah. Is something to do? The, the second is the person that didn't make, wasn't quick enough to get the motion. Well, it also you know? keeps well, people paying attention, yeah. right? Because <laughs> you have to second. You know, Lindley came up with doing the seconds, and as she learned the seconds, she got to do the motions, right? When, when Mo let you do the motions, you were, you were able to get to that next level. <laughs> so we'll remove that um, yeah. so we don't have to do the vice chair thing. Anything else? <clears throat> well, I should just talk about that next meeting is the meeting that you will do your appointments. Um, it just usually is good to re-advertise, obviously, since the passing of Carol Ketchum. You're going to need um, the, he was an elected official as a trustee of public funds, so I just kind of wanted to make sure we got that out there for another, you know, week or so. It's, it's nice to have it advertised for a couple of weeks, as for certainly for public you know, um, perception that obviously we're looking for people. We have an interested candidate, but we want to make sure we hear from everybody. Um, there's openings on the Planning Commission. There's openings on the Equity and Inclusion Committee. There's openings on the Energy Committee. Um, there's openings on the DRB. Um, there's you know, probably, I'm not even sure about the Recreation and Conservation Commission, but certainly my number one priority is the planning commission um, because there's you know adam moved is now relocated to chicago but luckily the rules allow him to stay on i had to double check with two rivers but you know it, it's tough there's very you know limited members i have approached people who've recently had permits that maybe went to the drb major landowners to try to drum up some more business for the planning commission but so far yeah. Um, you know, I haven't heard from anyone, but um, so like I said, if you're out there, Planning Commission, Equity and Inclusion Committee, Energy Committee, um, you know, pretty much if you have a desire to serve, we have a volunteer opportunity we, for you. Are we still also looking for a tree warden? We actually are, but well, I say that, but we have an interested person. So, so far, I do have a letter for an interested person to come on as tree warden, someone who's interested in being a trustee of public funds, somebody who's interested in being on the social appropriation committee. Um, so we have had, you know, three people, you know, recently, but still really, you know, need mm -hmm. members for other committees. And too, you know, the planning commission meets once a month. Uh, the DRB only meets when they have a permit, so it could be twice a month, could be not four months, you know, that they read. There's also so. the, the loan, the economic Oh, loan, the revolving loan fund revolving committee? Loan. That's and right, thank Carol, you. Carol was on that. And, and that one, we also have another person who may be retiring from that committee, which would leave one person. So um, the revolving loan fund committee, and that may not meet for... A couple of years <laughs> so okay. so if you have time but limited time the revolving loan fund committee is also or health so, officer or deputy yep we're officer. looking for yeah right now um obviously neil's still the health officer he has to recommend and appoint a deputy health officer but we're still you know he might relish the help so yeah, well, he was 
he was in the hospital the last time I spoke with one of his relatives. Yep. I know, the last time I had two, <coughs> so. Um, so anyways, if people are looking for committees to serve on, we have them and, and we'll advertise. Yeah, whether or not um, we kind of divide up the committees to kind of be a late, yeah. The liaison? Yeah. Some towns do, I know Dave serves on the, and Lindley serve on the transfer station committee. Um, certainly you attend the Better Connections and the Planning Commission meetings. Um, um, you know, Paul does the Social Appropriations Committee, and, and he's on Does Two Rivers, so he certainly serves. So um, it is nice if somebody wants to be a liaison between uh, the select board and a committee. You know, right. if you're not already, there's definitely places for people to do that. So, um, you know, Chris helps me with like the road projects. We're going to be working on a grant here pretty soon for paving. So, uh, if Chris isn't on a serving on a committee, he's helping me write grants and doing some of the road stuff. <laughs> so, everybody pitches in. But, um, but yeah, it's something that we had talked about. I think right now that's kind of happening. So, but I think the intent to have different committees in the town is for the select board not to be you know be everywhere yeah you know i mean it's or not have influence in those right i mean they you know not often do they come back to the select board but you know to not have that influence i guess um. so yeah i just wanted to give you an update that we're so if you're out there we're looking for you to volunteer <laughs> Plenty of We should roles. just be able to disappoint just people. Disappoint people. You have been voluntold. <laughs> Congratulations. You won't be you, you'll meet here on these days of the week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just getting to the point. I mean, and it's ups and downs. I mean, we have times where we have people on all the committees. We have times that we don't have people on the committees. And yep. Right now, we're heading on the downward trend again. So, um, it's too bad. so we just need a motion to um to approve the bethel select board rules of procedures well, amended procedures why are we doing that next time with the or or do you want to add it i said well, i could add it if you want to see it all done i can oh, okay. put it on the next agenda so that we can yeah. i can do all the okay, questions that's and fine. You can make sure yeah. i didn't miss anything it's up to you <laughs> that's fine then okay for now we're making up our rules that's okay. right Watch well, out. for now, your other one is still in force. Your 2016 one. All right. So we will just take, we don't need anything for our vice chair then. No. Okay. We have some liquor licenses, and Therese had noted in her town manager's report, I had that question last time where I thought it was kind of interesting that I was at a board meeting where they did not approve somebody's liquor license because they had owed the town something and I couldn't remember what it was and I just felt like there's no way that could be right yeah. but but it I guess right. you can so yeah. so I guess it's just another uh, tool I guess yeah um, I, I asked um, Patrick Ross our local liquor inspector and I was I wasn't sure I said this is I've never heard of this and he said yeah so I did reach out to someone um, who a uh, business that is not yet put in their liquor license request and I did let them know that FYI this is a new consideration that the select board does not have to approve liquor license requests and I gave them their outstanding balance so um, certainly would reach out to them again if they put their liquor license request in and their bill was unpaid I would certainly reach out to them but I did already just kind of heads up and, and I think for the most part when it comes to the businesses we don't really have no too many issues no. with businesses on that but it I, I guess it's one of those things that well, when we tool. do approve a license in town that we could look at those other pieces uh, but we do have two of them uh, there's a second class liquor license for locust creek store so unless anybody has any issues with that I'm, I'm assuming that their standings with the town is good yep so just need a motion to approve that okay all in favor? Aye. And then, and then we have 
I'll get these come around. Then we have the, um, oh, the other one is second class liquor license for Bethel Central Market. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Gene and Lindley. Just make sure you sign where it says approved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you, we just have to wait for somebody else to do that. Yeah. And then you'll be upset. <laughs> Put that on my headstone. <laughs> they're coming, yeah. They're both coming together there. That's true. Okay, That's well, true. at some point, somebody will make that mistake and then mm -hmm. we'll. Yeah, They'll be yeah. indebted for a while, you know? That's right. Like an old one, brother. Yeah. But it won't be us as long as Chris can <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you, Dave. Yeah. But. It used to be we had to do tobacco licenses along with liquor licenses yeah. every year. And, and uh, we always, I always had one select board member who would refuse to, to sign always. He always said no, and always, but I think he did it because hmm. he always had four other people who he knew would cover him. But just to be on the record? Of yeah, he just, that was his hmm. pet peeve, mister, and he was not letting it go, so he would always, so I always hoped we had more than three people if we were doing liquor licenses, because I knew he was going to say no. Always yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It just made me. I laugh. mean, the licenses when it comes down to unless you you know unless your yeah. community has adopted mm -hmm. a resolution against you know alcohol or tobacco at that point, I mean you're yeah. you're really you're you know, signing these, the license. I mean, some of these it's if they had an outside consumption permit right. or if you've ever had a Event town where you've or, had like problems, mm -hmm. then <clears throat> that comes up right. and then you start looking closely. But even and at that point, it's a, it's more of a state driven issue well, than can, it is a you, local issue. You can it? put, no, we used to, you had, we had one in particular, we put restrictions on really? hours of operation, whether they could have oh. music. Yeah. They had a garage door that opened, which was nice for them, you know, airflow and stuff but until they had bands. Oh, like the oh, neighbors yeah, yeah. not happy and yeah. so yeah so we ended up doing that and and putting um restrictions on hours and yeah so actually mm -hmm. when you had some problems when the liquor inspector keeps coming <laughs> eventually you have to do something yeah locally so well, luckily we we get to very lucky. few complaints so yeah no <clears throat> So liquor licenses are done. We have a uh, policy regarding road postings. So this time of year we start posting roads in regards to spring thaw, which looks like it's gonna happen Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, oh, so yeah. So you had the 2021 policy here and then, um, we, I just updated, okay, sorry, I had to think about this for a second. So I updated your policy before. So the policy regarding road postings we used to have on our prior year was from February 15th to April 30th. And so the state letter that you see here, rule 118-4, had different, the only thing I changed was the dates, basically where it's saying uh, November 15th to December 31st and January 1st to May 15th. Mm -hmm. So um, I just changed your policy to match rule 118-4. Yep. So if um, you adopted it, obviously I, I changed the date at the <coughs> bottom that this policy was adopted at Julie Warren meeting on March 14th, 2022, if, unless you have some changes. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any issues with that or are we good to approve as? To approve the policy regarding road postings? Good. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Did we not have uh, no overnight parking signs downtown this year? None went out this year. We the what? The, the, the signs overnight that put on the, on the poles that say no overnight parking. They had over. their park, Alan put up the parking permit requirement signs this no, year. This, this, these were signs that went on the telephone poles power poles and it says no overnight parking from such and such a date to such and such a date. Yeah, until I think until April huh. 15th. Um, I don't know. They usually go out every year. I notice and keep, keep forgetting to ask. Yeah. 
So they, well, first of all, if they're ours, we're not supposed to be putting them on the telephone poles. So that's a no-no, oh. but um, I didn't know. So I don't know anything about it. I'll have to ask Alan about it. So next year, obviously. Yeah, so I'll run a bunch of them. It's okay. Really no, I, I didn't know. Yeah, like a paper sign. I don't yeah, think they're, they're, they're like a paper answer. sign. They're not even a... Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. So what did it say? Just no overnight parking from November 15th to April 15th and really just for plowing. Or is it October? I think it's November 15th. Yeah, that would make uh, sense. November really for plowing. Yeah, November. There's no, no overnight street parking. Okay, so we should order some real signs and they should just go up because you're not yeah, supposed just to post placards. them on yeah, they paper. Yeah, they just anyway. that time frame and then right. they come down. Okay, well, I'll ask them. Um, or you can put... I've seen signs of no parking if there's over two inches of snow or something. Yeah, so for them, they need them gone just because of the narrowness. But I'll ask Alan about it, what the deal is with signs, um, because I don't know. And, um, and they shouldn't be, they'd have to be something, you're not legally supposed to put signs on the telephone pole, so they should have to put something else up. So I'll have Alan take a look at what we have for signposts downtown and see where just, they just be on the Telephone yeah, that's what I'm that's saying, because they're not deal. supposed to do that. I'm surprised the telephone pole people didn't, you know, that they could tear them well, off. They were temporary. They were yeah, uh, well, months. I'll ask Alan about it, because I don't know anything about it. I'll ask Alan and Kelly. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't know. So we'll that's find out. Here. Where'd they go? So thank you. All right. And then there's the H518 bill. Um, which uh, Teresa and I were talking about was to establish federal fuel switching grant programs. So it was more so on um, the state setting up an assistance for municipalities to take advantage of um, upgrades or switching, um, um, you know, weatherization type things, um, projects. It's it comes with, it's like a revolving loan right. type deal. Because it was like a two-part you know, deal. Either low interest or no interest type um, loans. Yep. Um, because part of it is that um, we'll provide, I mentioned uh, before, mentioned funding, which I didn't have a hammered out until I heard from Kirk White, provide funding to municipalities to replace heating systems with renewable energy systems in municipal buildings. That currently doesn't apply to what we're doing or need done. But then it does say an expand the state's energy revolving fund to help towns borrow money for cost saving energy improvements, which is what we want. And mm -hmm. some of our cost saving energy improvements are putting a new roof on the town office. And then obviously a lot of the work we're gonna do at the town garage is energy saving. So maybe there'd be a way to come up with a package deal as far as if there was some low interest or better interest financing. But currently the, the um, heating system at the town office and the town garage in here are nothing we're looking to replace right now because they're actually in, in not in, in pretty good shape. But anyway, so I did ask Kurt, and he said that the bill made out of committee has strong support, but they're wrangling over some wording. So he does think a letter of support to the Senate might be helpful. Um, so if that's something that you would like to do, then we can uh, send or send, I can draft up and send a letter on your behalf to the Senate in support of each. Or we can just I don't think it hurts us to send a letter. No, 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 I don't think so either. Yes. No, no. All right. So we will. I mean, we saw with the with the, uh, the BAC our participation in the re our redistricting, and we had a, an impact on what happened with that with a letter writing mm -hmm. uh, our Good. comments to the legislature. Good. All right, so we'll send him a letter uh, to the Senate of support. And we might look at the um, carbon reduction possibility or. with all, one of the reasons for the alternative en or the alternative right. energy is to reduce carbon. Right, for us we're just kind of in a, yeah. It's true. I mean, I, I can understand that. We're also, it, it's tough for us. Honestly, we're it's just not trying like, to get to the carbon footprint. We're just footprint. trying to get to the carbon footprint. <laughs> That's the way our stuff First is so gotta, old. Let's it's get like the new roof and the garage and the, yeah, yeah. The, the need is, you know, this hemorrhaging heat right now is a problem. So, mm. 
but you're right and it'll be something to look at um but it's hey let's just see if they can get at the money first and then we'll see what our opportunities yeah. well, are let's get let's get the bill passed and exactly see what, like. see what we can get yeah because so, there's yep, also absolutely. energy audits in there so we'll send a letter out for that all right so that was all right. Town manager's report. Is there anything that we uh, didn't yes. cover yet on that? So um, by now you have heard about our excellent news that um, that we got the earmark for six hundred thousand dollars for Sand Hill. So we had written the project. I was denied by either Leahy or Welch, Everybody. I can't remember who first. And then I was delayed by the other. Then I was rejected by them. And then the third option was Sanders. So, and we kept tabs on it and, and worked through it. And, and then we finally, um, I got the call last week. I occasionally would email Haley Pero from Senator Sanders' office and be like, so are we still on the running? Who do we need to beg? What do we need to do? And you know, she'd laugh. And, and then she called uh, the other day and said, you know, would you be available to speak to the senator? And I was like, sure, do I have to pull? I was thinking I still had to sell him on the project again. And she's like, well, I don't want to steal. It's good news, she said. So I gave her my number, but he got waylaid with other calls. So I haven't heard from him, but I did reach out to her. And uh, she emailed me back and said, um, I know Senator had hoped to call you personally to let you know that the Sand Hill and Stormwater Infrastructure Upgrade Project was included in the federal spending bill. Sorry, didn't, that didn't happen, but I'm glad you saw the news. Uh, she's just saying, we don't have many details yet, um, but the unofficial guidance they have so far is um, that it's agency dependent. So um, once the um, Senate and House appropriate, and once the spending bill passes, the Senate and House Appropriation Committees provide relevant agencies with a list of projects funded as congressionally dis you know, directed spending requests. So it says it's not an immediate process or disbursement of funds and can take several months. Originally, we had already thought that hope we'd probably include this in phase two of the water project, and that may work for us. Um, will agencies provide funding to recipient, recipients in full in a single award? That's also agency dependent. Um, so we'll find out. There's different going to be reporting requirements and certain things, of course. You know, it's an earmark, so they'll be ruled. But the good news is it's an earmark. It's $600,000, and there is no match. So that's great news. And I, you know, want to say thank you to Chris because he, I had already called Rita, thanked her, Two Rivers. She helped me do a map. She was the one who called me and said, can you drop everything? You want to write an appropriation request for <laughs> Welch or someone? I'm like, when's it due? She's like, a couple of days. I'm like, sure. So we did it. Chris had given me a number. He'd gone up and measured it, gave me a number for paving and, you know, taking off the pavement and adding gravel and all that. And then Tim Mills had done a, uh, whole thing on how much the storm water would be, what it would be for water and two hydrants. And so it's a great project. So between, you know, certainly uh, Chris and Rita and Tim Mills, it, it worked out. And then I did call um, Stan Capron. He was my uh, first phone call was their second phone call. I guess I called Chris. My second phone was Stan Capron. And, I, and he's like, you did it. And I said, yes. I said, but He's like, have you seen the road recently? I'm like, yes, I'm sorry. Is but there anything left of it? <laughs> not much. So it's uh, probably not going to happen, you know, this year, because until we find right. out when we're going to get the funding. But it's $600,000. So now we can do big, it, move forward with it. Yeah, and I think our price, once I had up, I had added an inflationary price, and I think I came up at, like, 699 So it's it's excellent news. I'm very excited about it. And, mm -hmm. and um Hey. And so this is basically a repaving and this is it's storm water and it's water. So basically it'll go um so we'll do not all the way to the town garage as far as water replacement. It also do bicentennial. Yeah, we'll so bicentennial. we'll upgrade um all the water line in there and the storm water on that road is very old and some of it actually goes out into people's lawns we found some old wooden structures that over the years people road crews have just been basically filling uh because they've collapsed a little bit so um 
you know, it's, and the road also took a serious beating after Irene because it was the only access to another part of town. So, mm-hmm. unfor- you know, probably should have got a lot of truck traffic and stuff Irene, that went up. But, but, but anyways, so um, at least it's going to help on the funding of the, the next phase. So I'm very excited. Plus it's just one of those, you know, we just put it off way too long, you know, oh. that yeah. probably should have been on the list, you know, a decade ago. It, it yeah. really takes a beat with all the time trucks going mm-hmm. up down, sure. back, Abs- forth, back and forth. Absolutely. Know. But I mean, now, I mean, we're talking, you know, probably 80 plus percent, 80 percent of it would be funded, you know, through this. I mean, we're not going to have to come up with, yeah. you know, the full kit and caboodle like we thought we were going to have to. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, so that's a good, so that's nice for phase two. The other thing for phase two is obviously we're underway with phase two. We've, we're at 80 percent complete mm-hmm. on the drawings. Um, so and I had negotiated our um, easement deal with the Adams so that we can put in that pump station. That's something that uh, Tim had talked to um, Dick and Pat about and we finalized that deal. So that's done. I still have some more easements to do, but you know we have time. Um, but we wanted to get a couple of these things, you know, taken care of. So certainly it puts us in the position that we wanted to be in, which was with mm-hmm. COVID money and other money coming into the state. If you have to be, if we have to be shovel ready for a project, we're going to be. Mm-hmm. And that's where we need to be. We need, we're poised for that. Um, and so I, I, we did the right thing by borrowing more money from the planning grant from the state. Uh, the DWSRF to, to move forward was was the right call, yeah. and um, we're still waiting for funding packages right now. And but we're still on the priority list, so you know we're we're in a good position there. So as I like to tell you, we have our hand out in every circle. <laughs> so um, the other thing on here was uh, Two Rivers and Mountain Escut- uh, Mount Escutney Prevention Partnership. Would like to know if you're interested in pursuing an ordinance to address recommendations made in the town plan. Um, so, as you could see, that was her email. Was mm. in the town plan. It said recommendation is the town should consider uh, ordinances and other regulations prohibiting use and disposal of tobacco, tobacco substitutes, vaping products, and marijuana cannabis on town-owned or town lease property or at outdoor events open to the public. Currently, our facility use policy only prohibits smoking here at Town Hall, Peavine Park, and the Bandshell. And uh, a big issue for us had been, um, pro- you know, at the rec area and other places in town where people were maybe uh, where people were smoking and they weren't on either their own property or their work property, and just in, you know disposing of cigarette butts. And um, Dietrich had been cleaning up a lot of them at the rec center. So I did ask Dietrich if the select board was in favor of doing moving forward with an ordinance, would she be willing to work with Two Rivers and Mount Escutney Prevention Partnership to draft the ordinance? And she said she would. But before I put had her put any time into it, I wanted to make sure um, that you all would be in support of, of that. It helps us work out, address some issues in the town plan, so, which is nice. What about alcohol? Um, alcohol is already prevented everywhere. You already have an ordinance on okay. that. <laughs> yep, yep, no, you already have an ordinance on that. No open container law, and, and there's an open container law in uh, that. I don't see why we wouldn't extend it to other town properties. And I don't know why you, you know, wouldn't either. It's already the Banshell and Peavine. Why not make it the rec center and, you know. Yeah, and especially, too, if possible. you can't smoke where you work, people are using other properties. And there was a question, too, which I didn't know the answer to. Or, you know, some people had talked about they don't want people necessarily smoking on the sidewalks. And I don't know. I would be interested to see what Mount Escutney I don't think you could prevention because that's what I'm thinking. It's public. It's a public way, but if you have several people standing on the sidewalk, you know, smoking. Um, I don't know. I I, I, I was. Some of them think you've got to take a look at enforcement, and you're going to get. If you do that, you're going to have to hire three more policemen. Mm-hmm. And they're going yeah. to have to work 20 hours a day. Right. It's a good point. So, so maybe just stick with get something, you, something that you can <coughs> control. Right. Or yeah. Like, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. No, someone had asked me about it, actually, about, said, you know, when they're walking, kids walking to school, should um, businesses, you know, that don't provide a smoking area have employees out on the sidewalk smoking and then kids have to walk through it? And I'm like, oh, it's still a public... Well, I, yeah, I was unsure. One of that is like at uh, GW, for example, they, they have no smoking on their property, period. So people tend to go out onto the sidewalk mm. or across the road. Yeah, so it's um, kind of a... But it's, it's, you know, like kind of growing up when, you know, my parents and everybody's parents smoked, you know, it seemed like when I was growing up, like smoking was like a... Yeah, everybody. It was a thing, right? Yeah. And, mm. you know, you don't see it quite as much now and I don't I don't yeah. tend to see as much of it going on or you know even you know I don't yeah, but vaping is included yeah, in this yeah. And that. but I don't I don't I mean even if you could like Dave was saying yeah. I don't even think we have the means to enforce it at this point right yeah. so it'd be kind of making something that you know that you're not gonna be able to enforce so we'll but stick with town owned property but like Lindley was saying like if we already have it on away. certain spots in town why not include the other two yeah. or whatever and and two and sense. it's yeah so this would be an ordinance also so all right that's fine so I'll let her know that just we're just looking those for those locations to the ordinance that's well, already well the, no the ordinance you don't have a the only what you have now is a pa a facility use policy I think this oh would be, if you're going to rent it right right oh gotcha so this is more of a this is definitely an ordinance. Yeah. So what I'll tell her is you're interested in public owned lands, but not like public rights away. Right. Well, it says I don't outdoor know. events open to the public. So I could be down the yeah. ball field, for example, even though it's not town owned property. Right. It's school is, there. Uh, that fall public, under, it is smoking and stuff would fall under the school. Yeah, I would imagine the school's policy is no smoking on so school we'll property, just say, which is the fields. Well, really? That doesn't happen yeah. in school ever? Yeah. Oh. So oh. I think that what Paul's <laughs> point is it has to be publicly owned or town town of bethel owned or town yeah town property. owned right. property yeah. not school so but if not the school wants right it they could do that yeah the, not school and I mean, not the rec fields are natural you know that's that's a no-brainer right okay yeah, that would include the town hall town the man at your office and the, right and the and are you saying oh well yeah, yeah. garage Right. I mean, and, and that's a, that's a good point because we currently have employed people that do smoke. So um, you're right. So if you if we went to an ordinance that talked about town property specifically, then um, across the street to smoke. That's yeah. Um, so that's Where the bees well. Are at. How yeah. do you how do you feel and about that? Yeah, so well, how I mean, do you... I mean, I think if the general consensus of the public is uh, the smoking is next, mm -hmm. and we've already done it most everywhere. Um, so based, so there would be no I, smoking at any, any town-owned property, so no smoking at the um, town garage, mm -hmm. no nothing. Okay. I mean, so, yeah, but that also gets into... Does that get into the... That would get into, like, Peabody and Park and stuff, oh, they too, can't wouldn't smoke. it? Okay, so that's all right. You've already got that, so yeah. Okay. But the only th the only thing here, that if you said that, is you know, that would affect things. Let's say Peavine Park or mm -hmm. an outdoor, um, you know, park. And it currently says that Peavine Park currently for the facility use policy, the ordinance already says that they can't people can't smoke at Peavine Park, and I think there's signs up. Mm. So this would include the base. So we would move. So this would be everything. Mm. This would be the town manager's office. Obviously, what are you going to, no one's who's going to smoke there, you're going to hit by a car if you stand out there. <laughs> the town hall, you know, property the town hall's on, the pump houses, the sewer plant, the, you know, so all town owned properties. It'd be just like, like no smoking on the school campus, right? Same thing. Mm -hmm. The interesting part is some of those people who have been told not to go out the sidewalk and smoke in GW get in their car and they come down here. Yeah. Or over at Peabody Park. Or over at yeah. Right, so, and this parking lot show. isn't here, out, isn't town hall. The uh, town park, municipal parking lot, I'm um, not sure you could, that's more of a public right away, so I guess we wouldn't exclude that, but certainly the rec mm. area, so. But again, right. it goes back to enforcement, how are you going to really enforce it? Right, but at least if we have yeah. it there, but then people can put up sign. I know the rec um, committee was doing a sign for the rec area. 
And I think that they do have some no smoking signs up there. And, you know, people do ignore them, but at least it'll be there. And, and then you could update the facility use policy after you, you know, to adhere to the ordinance. So well, I think when it comes to enforcement, some of it is more about the, the moment when there's a lot of kids around or there's an event. And if somebody's smoking, you can say, look, there's you know, no smoking policy. And you kind of have grounds, even if you're not a, an actual enforcement so when, person. So when we say no smoking, do we have to get in, do we have to define what smoking is? Or I is that, that already pre is that already I think pre that they will in no. more sense. Yeah. 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 Tobacco, tobacco substitutes, vaping products, and marijuana mm -hmm. cannabis. Yeah. Pretty much covers it all. Yeah. So that Unless you're just literally taking grass. And, and chewing tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tobacco well. substitutes. Okay. So we will, well, and the good thing is too, is they're gonna to work to draft it and obviously you'll be able to make changes. They'll see what they come up with and you can edit it to what you think. So we will move forward with that. Um, and that's it for town manager's report. Okay. And select board meeting minutes from the 28th of February. <clears throat> Any questions in regards to those? Are we good to approve them as they're written? Motion to approve as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Other communications, there was quite a bit in there. We had the official voting results. I want to say I w tried my hardest to dethrone Lindley, <laughs> but only got one right in. So Isn't she luckily fire? luckily beat me by 162 <laughs> votes. So we'll give it to her one more time. It's all that campaigning I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, so all the um, the official results are there in the packet. You might still have a shot at it though. Lindley C. The school board. The school board. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, the article in the paper said they would, they would assume that you'd be. Oh, I know. Oh, oh yeah. I've seen it's that. A, <laughs> uh, they tell you. Oh, you're the heir apparent. Yeah. 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 What's the challenge is because they allow both towns to vote in. Yeah. Yeah. A, a town to vote for the other town's candidates, then it brings in that minimum. Right. So. Had enough for Bethel, but wouldn't wouldn't have had enough to put the two towns together. Right, and I didn't realize that until afterwards. And I didn't realize that either. Both I had all combined. kinds of friends and yeah. that could throw them some votes in there, but whatever. So I think their meetings tomorrow night. So they'll probably be going through their appointments, and we'll have to yeah. advertise for an appointment for that chair seat. I would think so. Um, yeah. And I did. I think Royalton, did they have one board seat that didn't get filled either? Correct. Yeah, so yeah, one, yeah, so it's two. Such so many. Popular. All those popular people beating down the door to try to get mm -hmm. in, you know? Um, so those official results are there, as well as there was, um, I saw the EIC committee had their stuff in there. So on the EIC um, minutes, Mm -hmm. That whole section about Laura talking with Tabitha Moore and the, regarding the reporting forms for yep. Constable and that, is that something we should... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I had... Um, closer? Well, the Equity Inclusion Committee had done a really, had done an excellent job and they had gone through the reporting that we had in the... Um, that Oscar had provided and I gave it to Oscar because they had done a really nice job saying hey here's some ideas here's where we think um, you know that it they had some averages and it really threw the numbers off so I did give all that to Oscar and I spoke to Oscar last week and said hey you know did you get that email that I sent you and he said yes and I asked him if he'd made any adjustments yet and he said no he hadn't um, he'd been out on medical leave, so he had, hadn't had time to um, go through and, and, you know, address some of the issues, but he had looked at it and said they had some good points and there were some things in there he thought he could um, change. And that was a while ago. That was the round they'd given us before, but I haven't heard from 
Laura um, well, about tab about what reporting that she, I know she's probably talking about um, the one that the state police use and so yeah. they were switching for a while they were using Spillman and then I had thought they were going to change over from Spillman to um, oh snap what's the other name of the reporting so I'm not really sure which one they're talking about but uh, Rita's here maybe she can there answer was a, there was another one we had gotten from the previous constable mark from mark and there was a form that the state was requiring law enforcement to give them that mm -hmm. broke down yep you know by um, all yeah. sorts of different categories absolutely yeah um, numbers of stops and, and mm -hmm. ages and racial backgrounds yep which and, oscar and the, does and the goal do. was to to look at you know yeah. the racial disparity yeah, yep. was a state, and I, I think Mark had sent us uh, one of those filled out, filled out forms. It doesn't have any names, but it just, yeah. it, it's a lot more detailed as far as that. Yeah, because I did pull every ticket that Oscar and Justin wrote for the last two years and through the Judicial Bureau, and I did get all the data. And it does report um, when when he went through the judicial bureau, any ticket he wrote or warning that he wrote, I got all the data, and it definitely shows that he has to report race, he has to report all that. So, my yeah, assumption sure. is is that what Laura had given Tabitha was just the reporting that you know that was in the packet, yeah, which um, wasn't very, which wasn't great. And, which most um, of the stuff that he gives us in the packet has to be, yeah. So you know, there's a confidentiality piece of it, so. Yeah. So then there's probably another piece that goes yeah. to the judicial and that we don't see, right? Yeah. Or the public doesn't see, right? So I see that, yeah. um, so it, I, I'm assuming that we're just waiting. That it sounds mm -hmm. like Laura or somebody from the equity inclusion will be bringing this information forward and asking for more comprehensive data. So I think what we'll end up doing is putting Oscar and the equity and inclusion <clears> committee <throat> together and having Oscar go to an EIC meeting. And then he's the one who drafts software. He knows what the state rules are. And, and then they can go through it and sit down and host, because they had done a lovely job um, giving him some good feedback on his software. But he also is better um, to ask, answer these questions directly than um, going through the board. So once I hear from Laura, um, we'll, we'll put them together and they'll work out something um, together that will be Good. So, are we the pub general public, or are we an official body that would have reason to have access to what's going on in Bethel? In if it if it goes into our report? packet, it's public. Mm -hmm. So anything that's in our packet that we review, okay, uh, unless it's been labeled an executive session type thing, is public. So that's, and, and I, I don't know what the difference would be between what we would receive and what maybe the courts would get that would be different, but. Yeah, because he has, he does collect, he has the to website, collect. The website has all the data. Yeah, he has to collect all the data. He has right. to collect race and dates and all that. So my um, understanding is that, I, I think that the reporting he gave us to, that I put in the select board packet is just reporting that I had, you know, Kelly pull off from spider data. He probably is collecting all the data. I, I mean, I know he's collecting all the data because he right. has to adhere to the laws. So it's probably just the reporting that we pulled off that spider data isn't giving, um, just wasn't showing, you know, maybe exactly what the equity and inclusion committee is looking for. But I also think that, um, they like i said they had some excellent points where his data needs to be refined and i think that just putting oscar together with the equity and inclusion committee to say hey here's you know thanks for pointing this stuff out let's let's fix it and i've only used spider data to some extent and you know i'm not as well versed at it as, as he is but he would have to do this remade the same reporting as spillman and and at one point, I think he collected more data than the state even required. So I was probably a clumsy attempt to provide you know, everybody what they were looking for. Maybe well, there's better reporting, and I just didn't pick the right one. It's interesting to me that the website, the state website, includes no data for the last two years from Bethel. Oh, that is weird, because we have it all. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, 
Now, whether he's filing it as Royalton, I don't know, but there is yeah. no data for two years. Well, that's, I'll have to ask him because, um, like I said, I just pulled all of his tickets, his and Justin's for the last two years. I just got all that information from the Judicial Bureau and I got everything. All the race, the stops, the dates, the you know, the whole enchilada. So I'll ask him because I don't know. What and you would think is. that if the judicial branch has the information, yes, yeah, so why be isn't it on the website? You know, on so it's on the, the on the, yeah, no, it's just, great, it's on the VSP website, doesn't yeah, have it. I, I don't remember the link. Okay, uh, I'll find out. I can ask Oscar. Owen, do you know the link for that? That's I checked on the VSP site, oh, wow. I didn't, I wasn't able to find what I was looking for. Yeah, I can send you guys the links. It's from the, um, the, the state website. Oh, the VCJC. Yeah. It's the Vermont Criminal yeah. Justice Training Council. Okay, I can find out why they're missing it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'll talk to, I'll get a hold of Oscar this week and find out why our stuff isn't up there. Because so it should have. Reading it right. <laughs> Yeah. No. I mean, does yourself. that? I mean, from the notes, it says that Bethel's one of two towns in the state whose reporting was not in compliance. So yeah, we I mean, does that just mean that it's not showing up on that Bible. on that website? I mean, I find it hard to believe that we're not in compliance, but hey, or, be, you know, because obviously there has been things that have gone through the judicial system, so that information is there. Maybe it's not right. being reported correctly. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, so. I'll find out. We'll get to the bottom yeah. of it and that, find that out. Was a, that was a concern. When <laughs> it is a legitimate concern, absolutely. So let me find out from Oscar what's going okay. on as to what, why is it not. And, um, and then, like I said, I think we should, well, we'll put the two of them together because they had some yeah. great insights before. And, and, and Oscar was appreciative. He looked through it and said they had some great points and he was going to look at the software. So, But we'll find out. There was also info in there from the BRTS. Was there anything else that came out of the BRTS mm -hmm. that you guys didn't talk to us about last time? Or no, nothing new. I mean, there's no, we uh, we all, the only thing new thing is our new uh, facilities manager has uh, made contact with the state of Vermont. Uh, I don't know if you remember the name, the acronym, but. Uh, there may be a way to start taking some construction debris that nice. we're working on to see if we can get something going on that because of the potential monetary loss we're not doing that. Yeah, and there might be limitations, so it would be more of the big, the big players that do a lot of construction debris as opposed to the smaller households. So it's, it's sort of still in, in the works, and they're going to hopefully do a trial run within the next week or so with a few people to just see, can we, can we do it? Can we make it work? And more, more to be decided. Excellent. That'd be great. And the rec committee had stuff in there. And a rec committee, mm -hmm. um, for section E, they were, um, they were talking about Fund, doing fundraising with IOBY. What is, what is IOBY? Do we know? Yes. So it's it's undecided yet because we received an email. I received an email from Lindsay Shell. Is that right? And um, she sent a nice email asking you know about it. It's kind of, for lack of a better, it's like a GoFundMe type thing. So I had asked her for more information told her that um, one of the things that they need is, I explained that uh, the town of Bethel is not a 501c3. So we need to get oh, yeah. what's called a governmental informational letter, which we've requested from the IRS. So that's gonna take a little bit to get. But one of the things I had talked to her about was saying, we have shied away from these things in the past because we have to give somebody our <clears throat> tax ID number. Where's the money going to come into? Is it going to get, you know, we can't funnel into the general fund checking account. How is that going to work? So we had asked for more information. And then I had asked her to get a hold of Pam and to talk to Pam about it. Um, mm -hmm. Because there are ways, you know, sometimes what you can also do through this site is maybe register your, prod your project 
so you take so people can mail checks to you you know and not necessarily do like an electronic you know use their credit card so there are some options here uh, we were just trying to do a little get a little bit more information um, yeah I hadn't either and it was um, yeah it was and it was I lobby so that was the so they're still hashing it out okay So also then um, the Bethel Council on the Arts had their music schedule in here. Um, and then there's the finances are in here. Um, so I think that covers everything that was in your packet. Questions like that? I have a question on the, on the solid waste uh, report page. On the budget? Page one of two. Okay, yeah. The solid waste budget. Yeah. Legal. Yep. That is. That is that just misposting maybe or is that? No. Really? We had a lot of legal fees this year. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, okay. it's the. Um, Oh uh, Lord, I'm trying to think of the, the line of credit. Uh, the yep, the line of credit. Thank you. I was like, what's the word I want? Thank and you. Had the line of credit issues. and had some personnel issues, but also you know negotiating the line of credit and stuff. So yep, so those are legit expenses. Okay. All right. Anything else to come before the board this evening? We do have an executive session that we will enter into after to go over some annual evaluation stuff with Therese. Um, but as far as the public meeting goes, anybody has anything else for public meeting? All right. Hi. Can you hear me? It's Jen. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, Wondering, um, and I was a little late to the to the meeting. I'm sorry. I'm all set now to come in through Zoom. But um, who actually owns the transfer station? Whose building is that? It's the town of Bethel and the town of Royalton. We own the facility jointly. Okay. And what is Casella's part in it? Casella. We have a contract with Casella currently. Um, they come in, we have a two-part contract. One is that they bring, they haul their trash there and they also to haul our stuff out. So we bill them for what they bring in. And then, so we get paid for that. They also have equipment that's there. We lease equipment from them to run the transfer station. They do all of our hauling for trash removal, cardboard, uh, glass, um, food scraps, that sort of thing. So Okay, it's, and so when we're doing the budget, does the town of Bethel and the town of Royalton contribute equally? Actually it's run by fees. So the whole point of the transfer station is that we make enough money so that no town contributes. Uh, there's alliance towns, so all of the alliance towns contribute an annual fee to be part of the White River Alliance. So that's uh, Bethel, Royalton, Pittsfield, you know, Stockbridge. Barnard, etc., Stockbridge. So everybody pays an annual fee to be part of it. But then we try to raise enough money in fees so that no town actually, so that Bethel nor Royalton has to support it with taxpayer dollars. So what was the 1.2 million in the budget? 
Uh, that's the transfer station's budget. That's, so yeah. It's not a ton of Bethel or a ton of road to budget. It's just the transfer station's budget that they operate on based on the income from the fees and the alliance fees. So when we had to approve that budget? Actually, the BRTS board approves their, uh, comes up with their budget every year by October per the interlocal agreement. So they present their budget and then the towns of select boards of Bethel and Royalton select board um, just approve the budget that the BRTS board drafted. So when it was closed down for, um, you know, the part where you go over the scale and things like that, yep. um, was it because the building was inspected? Is that what happened? Yep, we were actually, yes, the, the transfer station was being looked at because um, there was some issues with one of, with the buildings they were talk, trying to create a capital plan for buildings to look towards the future. And once an RFP was created and a structural engineer came in, they looked at that building and said, uh, no, it's unsafe. So once we knew that, it became a liability, so we had to close it and our and are working now towards finding um, alternatives. Okay. And do we have some sort of plan in place as to another location for a dump? Um, I, I think that's something that we want to kind of get ahead of because with all of this plastic now that's coming into our world, I feel like that needs to be looked at. Um, you know, we have a lot more trash nowadays that's going in with the plastic bottles and, you know, plastic wrapping and things like that. Um, I feel like we need to start looking at other places to create another dump because um, I think we're going to run out of space there eventually. So there's currently not a landfill there. Your landfill was closed. There's very few open landfills left in Vermont. The state Two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, agency of natural resources frowns Actually on that. One. So currently, so the transfer station is what we have. We don't bury any trash there. Basically, it's a pass through. People come in. Um, okay. they, their trash is there, their recycling is there, and then just sell it, yeah, just transfers it from one point to another. So it's probably going to, my guess is it's going to Coventry, mm -hmm. the landfills uh, that Casella operates. Okay. Yep. So um, the best thing to do as okay. far as people's concern about plastic is of course, you know, more recycling. So um, just, just something real um, quick, I do Definitely, we'll definitely um, take that under advisement and look at that. And and we actually we actually cut our salt usage yeah. back by almost half 
about two years right. ago. Um, so we are using more more sand in, in certain areas, but may not be in your area. Because she lives on a paved road. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll take a look at it and. Yeah, and as far as the energy committee, if you're interested, my advice is to go to the town website and find out when the next energy committee meeting is. I know that they do meet by Zoom and certainly um, attend a meeting. We always encourage people to attend, uh, attend a couple of meetings um, and then you can see if it's something you're interested in joining and then if you are, you send a letter of interest to the town and, and the select board um, can appoint you to a committee. But we always encourage you to attend first and uh, just make sure it's what you know what you're getting into <laughs> but we appreciate it because we're looking for volunteers well thank you everyone for listening um and Penny, you're all doing a great job so um i hope you have a good night the energy committee meets on uh the second tuesday evening at six o'clock okay and so i would encourage you to go to that uh, okay. The Bethel Conservation Committee is another committee that is concerned about the environment. Okay, that's great. And just a plug, if you are interested, if you know about Bethel University, <coughs> there will be a gathering of people concerned about the environment and climate change. It's on that, uh, the Bethel U website. So I would okay. invite you to uh, to come to that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, anything else to come before the board before we enter into executive session? Okay. So we just need a motion to enter executive session to discuss the annual evaluation of the town manager. Nope. Nope. At the end. No, well, uh, yeah, I'll get, um, I'll get Teresa all the information at the end on, because we'll go into executive session and then we'll exit executive session back into public session. Um, we won't be taking up any, anything in public session and then, you know, then we will adjourn the meeting then. Okay. All in favor? Who was right. Who was the first? I heard Lindley. Lindley just moved it. No, oh. We don't have to do second. You have every other motion. <laughs> oh, it's you. Sleeping. <laughs>